And um, we did a little event, and uh, she spoke at the event, and, as I, and I've heard her many times, but as I was sitting there in the event, I thought to myself, this is just such an important message that everyone has to see. And I wonder if Darla, <clears throat> she's never been to Jerome. I have a home up in Jerome. I wonder if she's, I wonder if she's ever experienced Jerome. I'd love to bring her down here and have her share her message with you because I, it's just such a great message. And it's life-changing. And so you're going to get a chance to hear that. Uh, you're going to hear from her for a few minutes. Um, last, not last weekend, but the weekend before, I was in Chicago. My father passed away two years ago. In fact, wasn't I here right after, like right after yes, I lost yes, my dad? Yes. It might have been like within a day or two, yeah. Very something like that. I hadn't even gone, and and it was two years ago, and I was, my we've been paying every month for storage for my dad's stuff in Chicago, a couple hundred bucks a month. It's just sitting there, and we don't even know what's in there. It's just papers and you know his old desk and just stuff, you know. And um, so finally, you know, I decided I'm going to go to Chicago, get with my sister, and we're going to go through the storage and see what's in there. And really, there was nothing in there that we wanted to keep except for one thing, and that was what do you think? The pictures. The pictures. That's it. So my sister went home with a little box of pictures, and I went home with a little box of pictures. And everything else, we gave it away or, or, or threw it away. And I think about that as it relates to what we do. I mean. We send people pictures in the mail. They don't have, when they put stuff on Facebook, they don't have a, they don't have a physical that they can hold in their hand. They don't, they just put it on Facebook. And when you send that to them, when you pull that on Facebook, you put it in a card and send it to them, it's very special. They'll display it, you can walk into their home two years later. I do it three years later, four years later, and it's being displayed there. And that tells you something. So you wanna just, if you just pay attention to what, what do people want? Like if you just pay, like really notice, what people want, what they what they say, what they keep. It doesn't matter how old they are. It can be a 23-year-old mother. And when you send a picture of her baby to her, she saves that, puts it on the refrigerator. It doesn't really matter. People are people. So I want to share that with you before I bring Darla up. The second thing I wanted to share with you is I was, um, I was, I don't know what it is. Hi, Ellen. I don't know what it is, but um, I, just lately I've been traveling. But it's great, all really fun trips. And a little bit less than a year ago, I was invited to go to Bora Bora. And I'd never really thought about going to Bora Bora. It's not, you ever saw the movie <clears throat> Couples Retreat? Yeah. I'm single, and there's no Eden. So if you remember Couples Retreat, there was an Eden and Couples Retreat where all the singles went. There's no Eden. <laughs> all right, so, but anyway, I got invited to go with a bunch of top network marketers, and, um, including Eric and Marina Ware, uh, Haley Hobson and her husband Wes, Donna Johnson, her husband Thomas, she's the top earner of Arbonne and her husband. Anyway, we were, we were over there and we went with a, a surgeon who's the number one surgeon, orthopedic, uh, hip and uh, knee surgeon in uh, Nevada and one of the top in the world. He speaks at big symposiums. He himself, he's in his early 50s, he's in great shape, his wife Karen was there. He himself, has done 19,000 surgeries, and is in his early 50s himself. He does multiple surgeries a day, and he's known as one of the best in the world. So we're in, we're in Bora Bora, and we're in one of these lagoons, and the water is probably 20 feet deep, and it's white sand down below, and water up above, and it's just so blue, you can't even, it's like a blue color that you only see in Disney movies. It's like that, and we're laying on rafts, uh, with palm trees right on the beach, and we're just peaceful, and we're just laying on rafts. The air's nice, 85 degrees, and Mike, I'm sorry, Steve Gravetti, the surgeon, he says, Jordan, he goes, I'm in my 50s, and I never really, I've heard about network marketing, but I re really never understood what you guys do. I mean, people have prospected me before, and I've had no interest, I'm a surgeon. He says, I never understood what you do, but he said, We've, and everybody was there. He said, we've been here for five days and I'm stressed out. And the reason I'm stressed out is because I'm not doing surgery. And when I'm not doing surgery, I'm not getting paid. He's got his own private jet. He's got a big mansion. He says, I'm stressed out. And you guys are out here relaxing, having a great time, laughing, having fun. He was too. But the point was that he got it. He got residual income. People are selling stuff, people are buying things, and we get paid. We're all from different companies. 
but we get paid when we're on vacation. Once you build it, you can go on vacation. There, you will never, that will never happen at your job. So I wanted to share that with you. The other thing, another thing I want to share is that one of the things that I love about this profession is that there are things that I'm, lots of things that I'm not good at. And there's lots of things you're not good at. But there are people out there that are good at the things that I'm not good at and that you're not good at. And when you're in network marketing, when you start building a team, you will have people on your team that are better than you, that you don't even know, that will join your team and you get to benefit. And they do too. And you get to benefit from the strengths of each other. Well, the woman that I'm gonna bring up here, in many ways, she's better than me. Many ways, she's better than me. But there was a couple named Scott and Molly Aguilar that I've known for years, young couple, they, they have one kid and they got another one on the way. And I started sending them cards uh, 12 years ago. They had no interest at all. They were doing other stuff. No interest in sending out cards at all. Never asked about it, never wanted to see it. Well, about 10 years later, 10 years later, after they received probably 15 or 20 cards from me over the course of 10 years, they called and they saw I was gonna be in California at uh, Coronado Island. They saw that on Facebook and they said, do you wanna get together? Because they live there and I said, yeah, let's have lunch. So we had lunch. They didn't say anything. After lunch, Scott says, I'd like to get with you and I'd like to get with you and have you show Molly and myself send out cards. This was a 10 years later. I'd never talked to him about the business. So we, Wednesday night, over the phone, I showed them what we were doing. They got excited. They signed up. And they introduced it to their friend Darla. Now I didn't know, remember I was talking about there's people out there that are better than you? I didn't know Darla, I'd never heard her name. But she was a top earner in another company. Had tens of thousands of distributors underneath her in another company. Not during that time, she had already, she was no longer with that company. But she had, she was in a situation where she was looking. And Scott and Molly, I didn't present it. Scott and Molly presented it to her and she signed up. And they said, Jordan, you have no idea this woman. Now this is, I want you to think about this. There are people that you know that know people that know people, just like yeah. Jer Jerry was saying, just like Jerry was saying. And so Darla, who has an unbelievable story that I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let her tell you that story. I'm not gonna share it, but uh, it's so powerful for all of you. I want you to hear that. She lives in San Diego, married to her husband Jim for 16 years. They got a beautiful daughter, Bella. And uh, she is building, she was the number one, now take notes, she was the number one recruiter in send out cards last year. Woo. That means, I mean, she signs people up every single week, herself, okay? And so, so if, and that's where it starts. So everybody in the room that's interested in building, listen very carefully to what she has to say. And listen to the message behind the message. Not just what she says, but what's behind it. Like, listen through it, because there are, in everything that she says, there's a lesson that you can learn from. So with that, I'd like to introduce you. I'm, I'm gonna spend the last hour with you. She's gonna spend the next 40 minutes or so with you, and then I'm gonna let, spend the last hour with you and train. So please uh, welcome to the front of the room, the top recruiter and send out cards. I want to talk to you distributors for a minute. You know, I had a lot of you come up and ask me, do I have a team out here? No, I don't have a team out here. And a couple of you asked me, you thanked me for how much I give and share my stories of how to build this type of business so openly. You know, they, they, it's almost a confusing comment because in reality, what am I doing? I'm giving you my secrets so you can be better than Ellen. Oh, it's my honor to get to speak in front of you. I just got chills. I love this woman. <laughs> um, and people, see, she's gonna get my secrets and go make more money than me. <laughs> but you guys, my reason why I do that is for the same reason, and I'm, I'm really good at telling stories to paint pictures. Okay, that's my gift. My gift is I'm a great listener. I have the most incredibly infinite patience. You will never see me frustrated. I just don't get frustrated. I have this ability to be patient through the learning curve to help somebody understand and overcome. But I want you to imagine for a minute that you're dying of a rare disease. 
There's not a cure for it. And a stranger walks into your life and says, if you will take this pill, you will live. Okay? And so you trust in faith and you take that pill and all of a sudden you're cured. And you get released from the hospital and you come home that day. I get chills when I talk. And you get home and you come home that day and on your um, kitchen table is a vase filled with those blue pills. What would you do? Shove them down people's throats that are dying of that disease. And that is why I s that you would. You would. You would be, I don't care if you believe this blue pill is going to work, freaking take it. Take it. Hold them down, plug their nose, take it. Because you love it, right? And that is what this industry did for my life. So now I'm going to roll into my story. And that is why I'm so passionate about this industry. And you guys, if you're not a note taker, record me. Because you're going to kick yourself when you leave, when you go, what is it that she said? Because I'm Italian, I'm ADD, I'm a hairdresser, and I'm going to be all over the place. I don't take notes and I don't follow slides, so you're going to get me going this way, and then I'm going to give you something really great, and then I'm going to go this way, and I'm not going to remember what I said over here. So take notes, okay? I'm the type of person that when I'm not the speaker, I'm in the front row with my laptop on my lap, and I'm typing, I can type so fast. Or I'm recording and I'm autoing. Because when a millionaire is speaking, I am listening and taking notes, okay? So that's why I, that's how I learned this. I did not learn this in a classroom. Who do you know that has gone to school to learn how to make millions of dollars? It doesn't exist. People go to school to learn a career so they can work for people who make millions of dollars, right? And so what am I? I'm a high school dropout. Sorry, guys. I'm not educated by anything. So what does that mean? Don't believe a word I'm telling you because I don't have any degree to prove that I have facts right. Okay, it's simply just life skills. I'm the youngest of three kids. My parents divorced when I was nine. I'm going to be 50 years old the next month, so that means it happened before child support, which back in the day, mom always stayed home and raised the kids while dad went out and made the living, and that doesn't exist anymore. So my mom had to go work three jobs to pay for the kids, three kids at home. So that, mean I, that means I got raised at daycare, right? And so I heard a lot of things at home. My mom hated her boss. She worked for salary. She hated her boss. Why did she hate her boss? Because he was always in Hawaii golfing or on vacation, and she was a banker, so what was always happening? She was always at work. The alarms were always going off. People, she catered to a lot of the celebrities in Palm Springs. I'm from Palm Springs. And so she was always in doing transactions for them. And so a few things resonated, right? Because children are developed by what they hear that falls from the tree, right? The conversations in the bedrooms that mom and dad are having, what's happening on the phone, what's happening on the couch, around the dining room table and all that kind of stuff. That's the lessons that we get as children growing up. So I knew a few things. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be raised like I was. My mother was an amazing, strong woman. This woman, she is so amazing. Don't get me wrong. I feel sorry for the situation that she was raised in because nobody taught her what I was taught, okay? And so I, I knew I didn't want to uh, raise my kid and have my kids raised in daycare. And I knew I wanted to be like my boss and have people like her working for me. Let that one sink in, right? I wanted to be the boss, not the employee that had to work for the boss. So there was my lesson. Be the boss, don't work for the boss. Resonated, and it stuck with me. And so for all of you people that have teenagers that are troubled in school or struggling in school, just hang on. They're entrepreneurs. They just haven't found their feet yet. They don't fit in the box. They don't. They don't fit in the box. They don't follow rules. I was that person. Okay? And so I'm your high school dropout that goes and finishes on paper. If I got a C, we went for ice cream. That's really how good I did in school. <laughs> I just wasn't well at it. And so I was the person who just wanted to get on with life. I wanted to, I wanted to get out of the house. I wanted to get out on my own. I wanted to do all that. So what do high school females do? High school dropout females do, they go to beauty school. So I went to beauty school, and uh, so there I went, and I, and I found something that could be my own, and I became really good at it. And so I graduated from beauty school, got my first job, and I quickly learned that I was never going to be the, the boss living in the boss's house, driving his car. He, we had the square salon, and all the salon chairs were bordered on the side, and he sat on a black leather couch in the front, he wore all black, because we had to wear all black, and he would sit there with his legs crossed, reading the newspaper, that was back when they were printed, you know? Reading the newspaper, and he had a beautiful black BMW that sat out front every day, and he lived in a huge house, and I knew that no one in that salon 
drove a car like that or lived in a house like that and we never were because we couldn't make enough money to do what he's doing. And so I'm going to give you a couple nuggets that will teach you a PhD in business doubles master's degree today. And I'll save you the next 12 years in college. Okay, so here they are. You cannot create wealth with the works of your own two hands. If you work with your own two hands in this room, I want you to think of somebody that does what you do, that's done it for 100 years longer than you. Are they wealthy? Have they made millions? And did they retire young so they can travel the world? It does not exist. There is not a career on the planet. What is the largest board in our country? The Board of Labor. It takes hands of laborers to work for the other people that the 3% are called, right? Okay, now there is nothing wrong with that. I started using my own two hands, cutting hair. If my hands were not in your head, I was not making money. Period, plain and simple. I needed this to be happening every day for me to be making money, right? So if you're doing this, let it be temporary and don't let it become permanent. This is what you do temporarily to pay your bills while you are doing something on the side that is gonna build your asset, like you hear these stories talking about when my income matched my whatever I was able to retire, okay? You cannot create wealth with the works of your own two hands. In order to create wealth, you need an army of hands working either for you, which, what are those people called? Employees. Employees. Or working with you, what are those people called? Team. Team. Network, distributors, independent contractors, whatever they are, subcontractors if you're a contractor, whatever. You need an army of hands working for or with you. So six months into that journey, I connect quickly with the top stylist in the salon because I knew I needed a partner with someone with experience because I was new to the industry. I had the vision, she had the skills. She'd been there for many years. She didn't want to voluntarily quit working there and go open business with her with me, so I got us fired. I got us fired and then she had no choice. So off into business we went. I was gonna push her out of the nest because I knew she would fly if I got her to just lean forward. And so we opened our first salon and we started hiring people one at a time and training them how to be hands that worked for us, leveraging our efforts. So being able to finally go pee and still make money, you know, go eat lunch and still make money. Because as a hairdresser, you just don't do that. You don't do that. You, you go sit on the toilet as a hairdresser and you're like, that's $40, $50, $60, you know, get back out there. Because <laughs> that's how much it's costing you to go to the bathroom. And the same with lunch. That's why hairdressers just don't take lunch. They eat during a, they eat standing up their whole life. It's just what they do. They'll inhale a five course meal in five seconds. <laughs> Any hairdressers in the room? No, you know why there's no hairdressers in the room? Because hairdressers can't do anything on Saturdays. It's a fact. I was telling Jordan last night or this morning over breakfast, I said, I remember the first parade I went to and I cried. I became overwhelmed with emotion because it hit me that I'd never been to a parade. And I would, couldn't realize, I couldn't believe what I had missed, you know, because I had always to be in the salons on Saturdays. All my friends would go to the river but me. Everybody would go on vacation but me. Everybody would go do things but me because Saturdays was the big money day. So you cannot create wealth with the works of your own two hands. In order to create wealth, you need an army of these guys working for you or with you. Okay, learn that. That is wealth. Now, there's a difference between uh, wealth and being able to be wealthy and retire and live life. Because most wealthy people, like I was in my salon, doing $3 million a year, $55,000 payroll every two weeks. My haircuts were $200 for women, $100 for a bald man, no lie. My, it was nothing to drop $500 to get your hair haircut and highlighted with me. Because I had worked myself up into this vision of I was going to cater to, this, to the money in Palm Springs, which we did. Everything was great, wonderful, and fabulous. I had 49 sets of these guys working for me to do $3 million a year. Okay, but I had no life, none. I had to keep showing up, turning on the lights, and con continuing to create my transactions, okay, every day in order for that to happen. Okay, so slide that aside, that's one nugget. And then another one is, until you can make money in your sleep, you'll never be free. I could not make money in my sleep over here. When you guys didn't come sit in the chairs and my stylist didn't come show up to create the transaction, there was no money made, okay? And so my first one that I forgot to give you, I gave you two and three out of order. So number one is the definition of business. <coughs> business is something that requires an investment and then a transaction between a customer to a product or a service for a profit. I want you to think about where you work and where your paycheck comes from. Somebody bought the business. The boss did, the owner did, you did, I don't know, somebody bought the business. And then there needs to be a transaction, and a lot of people don't even know what a transaction is. 
A transaction is an interaction between a customer to a service or a product that comes for a price. Okay, so if I bought my bottles of shampoo for $3 and I put them on the shelf for $36 and then I paid an employee $12 to sell you the product and then somebody behind the counter to create the transaction, there's a profit there. Whether you're doing a haircut that costs 35 cents but you charge $200 for, there's a transaction. Someone's gonna pay for that. In every business, there has to be a transaction. Without transactions, there is no profits, there is no business, period, plain and simple. Your paycheck, the number on the line, comes from customer transactions, if you stop and think about it. So if you learn the definition of business, that it's about creating a transaction, it's no different than what we do in network marketing because I pay for my network marketing business and I created transactions between customers to products and services, okay? And then I did what I did in my hair salon where I trained my employees how to do hair. I was a school, nobody went to beauty school. I taught them all how to do hair. They're top hairdressers today. And so I created that, I, I taught them how to create transactions that triggered money. That's how it works. You gotta get money moving. Money needs to move. And then so I just applied the same thing over here into network marketing. I paid for my business to get started. I created transactions between customers to products or services. And then I taught other people how to do the same thing. It's no different than my hair salon, only it doesn't come with a brick and mortar structure. It doesn't come with the cleaning ladies, the payroll, the $55,000 payroll every two weeks, the overhead of $150,000, and, 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 it, and it didn't come with owning me. I don't, you know what I mean? I'm free now because I can go wherever I want because I am my business. My business, I changed the structure of my business. I was telling Jordan this morning, I'm all, what we do is so simple, and I have such a vision for it that I just don't understand how some people just don't get it. But then I do, because I didn't get it till I got it. Do you agree that you don't know what you don't know until you know? Okay, now let me take you back before all this great, wonderful, fabulous stuff that I'm telling you about. I was the world's biggest MLM skeptic. I told you these things don't work. They're pyramid schemes, run the other way. I had a top salon. People with money came to my salon, network marketers are people with money, they came to my salon, I saw everything, I was pitched everything, I would be, buy their product because I didn't want them to leave me, but I never joined and I always talked about them behind, my, behind their back, not mine, in front, of their, in front of my face, behind their back. And I always told people, don't do those things, don't do those things, and let me tell you why. I didn't know anybody personally that had made money doing one of these things, okay? If my parents were me, do you think that I would have thought differently? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. My daughter's 13 years old. Imagine what this child knows. She's listened to mom talk and coach and counsel. She can stand up here and do the same talk. And she understands a few things. She understands the definition of business. She can recite it. She understands residual income. I didn't never know the word. I never knew that residual income was a way you could make money while you were sleeping. I thought that Making money while you were sleeping meant that you had to have multiple businesses all over the place that were open 24 hours a day. That's what I thought, because no one taught me otherwise, because it wasn't taught to them, because it's not taught in school. Get it? Wealth is taught by millionaires and mentors, because they've done it, they've created, created it. Careers are taught in college by professors and teachers, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all need them. The world can't run without people doing our floors and painting our homes and cutting our trees down and, oh, I just had a visual of a meme someone sent me yesterday. Anyway, so, <laughs> so we need, you know, someone's gotta cut your hair. So entrepreneurism is not for everyone. Getting to the level of making millions in life is not for everyone. It's possible, but it's not for everyone. But making an extra $500 or an extra $1,000 or an extra $2,000 so that you can just breathe a little easier and help somebody else and be able to live a little bit happier and be able to travel a little bit more and be able to reach the dreams that you wanted to have is possible for every person that can breathe because you're already doing it. You're already doing the transactions and the functions of what it takes to live. Every single one of us in this room <clears throat> do not look anything alike. Well, except for two, yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you removed our hair and our skin, we're, t we're all the same. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. We're all the same. There is a parking lot filled with cars. 
If you removed the body off the car and took the engine out, that's really only the X factor, the size of the tires and the size of the engine. Everything else is pretty much the same. Only some cars are only gonna get you down the street while other cars can take you up over the mountains. Get it? And so business is the same way. And if you can learn this vision, you can walk into any business. My daughter at 13 can walk into business, tell you the transaction, tell you if there's residual income or not, tell you if there's leverage. You know, this morning we ate at a beautiful cafe here or in Jerome, beautiful, beautiful, adorable cafe, young couple, and I'm like, this is really great, wonderful, and fabulous. I'm sure it was a dream one day, but I wonder how they really feel today. Because they're the they're the employees. They just so happen to also be the owners. That they love it, but it's a prison to them. Yes, yeah. it's a prison. It's a prison. Yeah. And because there's a structure shell on it, they can never be free, and they'll never make enough. If you have to put walls around it, it's limited income. It's limited. Do you know the, there's probably only a couple people in this room that might even be in a, in a job or career that a chance exists you could make $100,000 a year. The chance, it's there. Somebody did it once, just a couple. And then the rest of you, it's not even in existence. It doesn't exist, right? And the only reason why people don't, why people think $100,000 a year is a lot of money is because you haven't learned how to make it in a month, like some people do, because it is possible. And you tear those people down and they're no different than us. So here I am in my salons, doing $3 million a year, top salon, totally debt free, living in my custom built dream house, had it all going on, I'm at the top of my game, you can't make much more money in the salon world than I was making, especially where I was at. It just wasn't possible. I would opened already five salons by then. I, my overhead was $150,000 a month. That's how just leveraged out I was, okay? But I was at the top of my game. I was it, you name it, I was it. And then came this thing called the crash, okay? And what did everybody decide to cut back on that had money? Hair, hair, massages, I was, I, I actually uh, made it in the day spa boom. I was the first day spa to open, not connected to a resort like Ritz Carlton or something like that, and in a, in a free standalone salon. So I got in front of a wave, and that's where opportunity lies, you guys, in front of waves. So this is back in 06, 07. I had a bunch of 19-year-olds working for me on up. I had 49 people by that time. And they, they were, I, was, I was watching them on these phones on this thing called MySpace, and then Facebook had came around, and I was fascinated that they could talk to somebody somewhere else outside of our town, and, and they could move messages on the other side of the world. And I understand business is about moving a message. Every single one of us in this room are salespeople, whether you think you are or not. You're either selling yourself to a transaction to somebody else, or you're selling your boss for another hour of work. I want you to stop and think about that. So many people think, I don't sell. Yes, you do. You sell yourself, number one, and then you sell your boss, number two. Because if you don't do what he says and give him what he wants, you're out of there. You're a professional salesman. You're just doing it for someone else versus someone for yourself. Okay? It's different, but it's the same. And so um, I didn't know what I was going to do. So the crash came. These people cut back. I knew that day spas were going to crash. I knew it because people were going to cut back on the, on the unnecessities, on the luxury items. That's where they cut back on, the luxury items. Because I had made it through the 91 crash. I, hit, I was in the 91 crash, watched what happened to the lower end salons. The reason why I made it through the 91 crash is because I catered to the upper class and it didn't hit them, it hit the middle class. My clientele was the upper class. This recession started right, excuse me, I'm here. They were the first ones, right? Crash, they came in the stock market. And so anybody with money back then invested in stocks and real estate. And so I got annihilated in the stock market. Nobody was buying my real estate. And so I was just one of those people. So if you tear down, like I did, tear down the car, take the skin, take the car away, in the end of the day, I'm just a high school dropout who by this time is now handicapped to her trade because I've had six discs replaced in my back and I can't do hair anymore. What am I gonna do? And I said, I don't know, but I know how to build leverage. Leverage was something that I learned. You cannot create works with wealth with the works of your own two hands and you know our hands working for or with you. I get asked to work for companies every day when, because of, I'm really good at what I do. Marketing, I'm good at what I do. I can market a message to anybody. And so people all the time ask me, and I'm like, no, I won't do it. There's no leverage and no residual income. I, when I see somebody post on Facebook, 
congratulations, I got the job. I'm like, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. I'm serious. Or when I have a friend who's, who goes and gets a job and goes to trading, and I'm like, oh my gosh. I can't even tell you how many times people get into a temporary situation and then they fight to keep it until it becomes permanent. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they got started and they said, I'm just going to stay here for a little while until I get this and I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go here. But what happened is they said, let's cut back on our dreams and let's just shrink things down to come down right till we just can meet them right here and let's live right here. And that's what happens because... We're all in a brainwashed box. We're brainwashed that we're living in hard times. We're not living in hard times, you guys. Money shifts. It's always there. You just got to know how to get in front of the trends. So I knew that about trends. I've watched and studied people of wealth. You don't learn that in a classroom. You got to become good on personal development. You got to study people that have succeeded, listen to their stories, listen to them speak, get in a bunch of these rooms like this all the time. I have flown all over this country to get in rooms like this just to listen to people's stories because I'm going to grab a nugget and I'm going to apply it. And all it is is confidence and posture and belief. The more you believe, the more confidence you have, the more posture you want, you can put out and the more people are attracted to that. And, and that's really the truth. And so um, uh, I knew that this thing called MySpace and Facebook was changing the world. I had never turned on a computer. I would sent an email or two and I knew how to text. That was where I was at that time. And I kept telling my husband, I said, I think I'm going to have to go back to school because I have to learn a computer. Because that's where this thing that called the internet is reached and that's where I need to get. Because that's where money's going to move next. Because if you can move a message outside your backyard now and you can move it through the world, through this thing called the World Wide Web, that's where opportunity's at. And I became obsessed with it. I used to sleep and dream about it and think and think. And I know that when I focus on something, it's eventually going to come to me because I can clearly see how the body works and how the car runs and how transactions need to happen and how hands need to work with you. All those are facets and functions to money and wealth. And so I, 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 because of society and what the world tells you that you need a college degree to be successful, that's where my mind was at. I was like, I'm, I'm going to have to go to school. I hate school so much that I just, I'm like, there's gotta be another way. There's gotta be another way. So for four months, somebody had been trying their darndest to get me in one of these rooms. And I don't know how long it's taken your friend to get you in this room, but it took me four months. Hopefully it took you a little less time than that. Okay, so for four months, I avoided the guy, turned him down, didn't call him back. He was a creeper to me because I didn't know him. He was a local businessman who was a, basically a stalker. I'm, I'm, I'll say it, I, talk, I, I talked so bad about him. And so, um, I really did. So on March 26th of 2008, if anybody in business remembers that day, that was the day that the banks pulled back the big credit lines at the banks. So we were crashing, coming down really fast. And, he, and I'm still in this, I can make it, I can do it. A month prior, we had just signed another lease on, on, on El Paseo, which is like Rodeo Drive. And once you sign that lease, you're done. And, so, and then came the crash, so it's like, oh my gosh. Anyway, I had borrowed over $500,000 on personal note loans from clients. That's how much money I had in my, in my salons. And that was nothing. You know, it's all, it's all just a number, and your number's different. You know, if I said, who's willing to take off your clothes right now and run up and down this aisle and go put your clothes back on, none of you would do it. But if I stood, stood up here with a bucket of money, and I said, it's going to go to the first six people, and I started flipping down $100 bills, it's going to take him about six to come up here, right? Because he doesn't want to be one of the six. He wants to be one of the six. And a couple of, and when I get to about $10,000, your guys' hearts are going to be pulsating. You're wondering through your mind, what kind of underwear do I have on today? <laughs> Did I shave? You know, you, all this is going through your mind while I'm clapping down this money, but everybody's got a price. Okay, so everybody's number is different. That's it, okay? I've made millions and I've lost millions and I've made millions and I've lost millions. I'm getting really good at it now. <laughs> and that's because I know how to create residual leverage. Residual leverage is the key. Leverage is what I had in my salons. I was never going to be free, but I had a great life and I made a lot of money. But I was never going to be free. If you don't apply residual income to your leverage, you're never going to be free. That is the only reason why Jordan can go off for a month and travel the world and make more money than he made when he, when he was gone because he's got all of us back here becoming him. Get it? We're all doing it to their different degree. There is so many people in this company 
that you will never see their, see their face or hear their name because they've already built enough residual income that they're off living their dream. Because that number is different for everyone, whether it's just $2,000 a month residual income. I didn't even know what residual income was. I was your skeptic. I had the stalker for four months that I was putting away, March 20, pushing away. March 26, 2008, I'm sitting at my desk, get a call from the bank. Darla, your $20,000 overdrawn in your payroll account. Yes, I know, we saw that this morning. We'll have it cleared by the end of the, by the give us a couple days, you know. Sorry, Darla, the bank's pulled back the credit lines today. We cannot cover your payroll. And that was the beginning of the true fight. And it is amazing how long I fought and dug and worked so hard to go in the hole every day. Showed up every day. Did it every day, every day, every day. Because of the investment that I made. It had been hundreds of thousands of dollars and years and years of time of my passion and life and it into it, you know? And so the, it baffles me when people get into network marketing and two days later they want to quit because their three friends were like me and told them no, <laughs> right? But the reason why is they didn't invest $500,000 into it. Those people, to all you people that are listening to me on the other end of this video that are gonna watch this, that you, the only, if you're in this business and the reason why you're not in this room is because you didn't pay $500,000 to be in this business. If you would have paid $5,000 to be in this business, you'd be here today. Tommy drove all the way from New Mexico, drove for six hours this morning to be here today because he's treating it like a business, not a hobby. The people that are not here today are the ones that treat it like a hobby. If you, and if, and if you'll put your mindset on that, you'll work like I did over here, and you won't care about the people that, that didn't show up that day, you'll keep doing it, and you'll find new customers, right? And you'll keep doing it. So I'm, I'm overwhelmed by this time, and I was still looking pretty on the outside. My grass wasn't brown yet. You know how you know your neighbor's going bankrupt when their grass finally goes brown and the pool is green, you know? But if you stop and think about it, nine months prior, they still weren't paying their mortgage and paying the bills, you just didn't know it yet. But if, if you could have known that, what could you have changed, right? I always say, if I could stand outside of a church and just interview people, what'd you pray for today? I guarantee you they prayed for something that requires time and money. Mm -hmm. Time and money, time and money. There's nothing else in existence that, doesn't, that can't be fixed with time and money. Maybe love, that true. Okay, um, so March 26 of 2008, I've turned this guy away forever, and I'm sitting there, and a voice just comes over me, and it's just, it was my moment. That previous Sunday in church, they had spoke on the big flood, if you've ever heard the story. There's a flood, and they send the guy to rescue him, and he says no thanks, and sends him away. Sends him away, sends him away. The guy drowns, goes to heaven, and says, God, why didn't you try and save me? He said, son, who do you think sent the, the boat, the plane, and the helicopter? Right. And in life, we all have the same opportunities and moments in our life. Every one of us get presented with the same opportunities in life, but some push it away, and some lean into it. And that's the only thing that made the difference in my life is I had a voice tell me, why won't you listen? So why won't you listen? I was going to turn him away one more time. And that day, March 26 of 2008, I said, okay, I, he only wants 30 minutes. And I told my husband, I'm going to just listen for 30 minutes, call the police, call a fire truck, get me out of there. Right? And I knew he was trying to get me into an Amway thing. I just knew it. And that was my perception. Perception is never reality. Teach that to your children. Perception is never reality. And so I go to this presentation, and I don't understand anything he's showing me. By this time, he's trembling and shaking and stuttering and cotton mouth because he finally is in front of me, right? He's like, this is the day he's been dreaming about. And so I'm sitting there. I watch the presentation. I don't get any of it but one thing. He was showing me how to make money on this thing called the Internet. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I just had this overwhelming thing of, this is it. So he was showing me all this money, and I said to him, I said, do you know somebody that's making this money? He said, yes, I do. And I said, I want to meet them. Can you get them? I want to meet them. I want to see them. And so that is where I met that guy called Scott Aguilar. So I, he drives out from San Diego. I lived in Palm Springs at the time. And I just interviewed him. I said, do you have a college degree? Do you have any special skills? Did you have to go pass a test? Because I knew these were things like I could. <laughs> did, you have, did, you, did you have to study, read? Yeah. <laughs> like, how fast do you get paid? Have you ever made this kind of money? Tell me just what I need to do to create the money. Because I've learned that. Learn what triggers the money in whatever you do and just become really good at that. Don't learn anything else that doesn't require you to create the transaction. And you know, when a baby's born, you don't need to teach it how to hang glide yet. It just, it's just bad timing, you know? Teach it how to 
get its neck strong. That's all it needs to know. Suckle, poop, pee, pee, get its neck strong. And so that's what I learned. I've learned that through everything I do. Get good at just what needs to trigger the money and get, then get good at directing them to where the information is. Don't fill your brain with stuff that doesn't matter, okay? And so I still, I still can't tell you half the stuff, the questions that people ask me, but I can tell you how to invite, present, and close. Invite, present, and close, and use the app and send a card. And so I sit down in front of this guy, uh, and he shows me this thing, and we're $20,000 overdrawn in our payroll account, $1.6 million in debt overall, losing everything, and it's $720 to get started. Before I walked out the door, my husband, who was our CFO, said, do not come back here and ask me for any money. I said, I know, we don't have any. And that was, all, uh, that was fine, okay? And so I come back, and I say, I need a check. And he's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I said, yes, I need a check. I, and I come back bouncing off the walls. He's like, where have you been and what did you take? Because I hadn't smiled or laughed or felt hope in a long time. I had been hopeless, helpless, and crying myself to sleep every single day for months and putting on the fake smile in the front. When I came in, you'd have thought I had been on a crack binge with the neighborhood guys, and I came back, I was high as a kite because I saw hope. I saw the light. Get it? I saw the light. And so I said, give me a check, I need $720. And he's like, you're crazy. And I was like, I know, it's gonna bounce, it'll cost 34 bucks, I'll know by then if it'll work. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and I wrote my first willing hot check that day. And I got started, I did, I did. And I, and, and I think, what if I hadn't have done that? Do you know in all my nine years how many people have said to me, oh, I could never do that. I'm like, I know, that's the difference between you and I. Try it one day. <laughs> it might get you somewhere. <laughs> you know, people crack me up. I'm all, you know what you just said to me? <laughs> and, and, and if I hadn't have covered that check, I think it was more like $700 in bounce check fees by the time those checks came in. But um, I, and if I hadn't have covered that check. And so you guys, I, all I did is learn how to create a transaction between a customer to a product or a service no different than I was doing in my salons already with haircuts, colors, shampoos, conditioners, and skin cares, okay? And I learned how to teach someone else how to do the same thing like I taught people how to do hair. It was just duplication is all it was. And we went on to dig our way out of our hole. We made our first million dollars in this industry in three years. Went on to make millions, built that team to almost 45,000 people, and then that company went away. And you guys, that company going away is no different than my salons that went away. It just is business. How many of you have worked at a company that there's, the business went away? It's just business. It's not MLM, it's business. It's all the same. One has brick and mortar, one has the World Wide Web. That's the skin. They do the same thing in between. One is limited income, one is unlimited income. One has business hours, one is Vegas hours, okay? <laughs> 24, 7, 30, whatever, how many days are in a year, I don't even know. Okay, <laughs> and so then, now I'm looking for my next company because now by this time, I am an advocate instead of a skeptic of MLM. And I am all about this industry, gave my family their life back, and I'm gonna teach the world about an industry that has been blackballed because of ignorant people like myself. <laughs> I used to be the most ignorant people you could ever imagine. I actually have made amends and apologized. I think back on how many people I stole their hope, crushed their dream, and, and stopped their path. I was their damn because of my ignorance. It's, oh, it's sad, but it is. So now that's why I'm loud. That's why I'm loud about what I do, because this can be, if you choose to just get down and grind, don't care about what people think. Do what you need to do every day, every day. Become attractive, and I don't mean physically, posturous. Become attractive and believe in what you believe in. I, you gotta remember, I sat in your chair one day too and started just like you. I hadn't made a penny either. And I didn't have anyone on my team. And I have had entire legs fall out of my team and get swept off by other companies. It still happens today. It doesn't bother me now. Did I used to cry myself to sleep? Heck yeah. Did I used to throw up? Yes, I did. 
I used to have panic attacks. My, my customers couldn't believe I was gonna do a pyramid scheme. It went around our little town like a rumor. And I was just like, okay, I'm fixing to run through hell. I better run fast. You know, I'm not stopping along the way. And I just learned what I needed to do to trigger the money. And I just went and I barreled through it and I barreled through it. And I went through the numbers game. That's all it is. You gotta go through the numbers game and don't let anybody stop you along the way or you'll burn your feet. You will, you gotta have that mindset. You gotta just keep going. And the, you know, I looked like a fool to a lot of people at that time. I really did. I looked like a fool, but the fool was only a fool until she won. And then what was the fool? A genius. The fool was a genius. Now people talk about you saying, damn, she did it. Wow, it was right. It really worked. Mm -hmm. And so you guys can do the same thing too. If you just learn to do what you need to do every day, as if you put $500,000 into this business, 500,000 because the world is brainwashed. My, my, I have a 13 year old in school and it repulses my stomach what they teach these kids in school. Career day, you know career day? She comes home, mom, I wanna be a nurse. Why do you wanna be a nurse, baby? Well, these are all the options. We went around and visited all the booths and I'm like, well, no wonder all these kids are being taught to go to college and get careers, you know? This is their only options. Where's entrepreneurism? Why aren't they teaching our children how to be entrepreneurs? Because you know why? Teachers aren't entrepreneurs. They can't teach our kids what we do not know. Think about it. If, 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 you, if you are in a structure, you know, I wish you could see what I see. I watch parents say to their children, as long as you live in my house, you better go to college. All they're doing is putting shackles on their kids' feet and arms. That's all they're doing. What worked for your parents and our grandparents does not work today. 401s and 40-year careers doesn't exist. It's four-year careers if you're lucky. 401ks don't exist. It's too expensive today. Do you, do you realize in my salons, I had the most highest paid top stylists. I, when I would be hiring for a stylist, I would have 200 people interviewed. And we'd have to do like speed dating, speed interviewing, get all the managers out and interview all these people to find one. And because we paid the highest pay in our city, and what would happen when every single one of those people banked $100,000? They would go open up their own salon, take my clientele, all my hard work that I taught them, and now become my competition. Then came the tightening of the recession, started creeping in. And we had to start cutting things like, like uh, dry cleaning and gas allowance. And we had to just start cutting things off, taking a 401k away, taking, you know, just trimming them back. And what happened when that happened is they became loyal. And then it hit me. I get now why employers only pay their people enough to survive, not enough to escape. Oh. And that is how you create loyalty. Go, go Google the definition of slavery <clears throat> and then go Google the definition of a job. They're identical, <laughs> identical. You cannot make enough, a, a reason why a business owner does not pay you more what you're worth, because you'll leave them. Let that sink in. You'll leave them. They, don't, they can't afford to lose you, it's too expensive. And so you guys, if, if, if any of that made any bit of just a little bit of more sense to you or gave you just a little bit of more inspiration or fight of why this industry, is so amazing. Now let me tell you why I send out cards. My first company was a technology company, all right? Because that's back when I, when I said internet, this thing on the internet, technology's the big boom, and it was. It was a telecom company, which doesn't even exist anymore, hardly. Remember when we used to pay for local long distance and we used to pay for all those things that just don't, we don't pay for anymore, you know, back in the day? Well, there used to be big profit margins in that and I made a lot of money in that because that was the boom of technology of, of that era, okay? And then, so I went to, what was the next boom that came around? Health and wellness. That was the next thing, health and wellness. So I went to a health and wellness company and I got fit and I got all healthy and all that kind of stuff. Well, back in the day, there used to be maybe 10 health and wellness companies. How many is there now? Can you say saturated? <laughs> now you can practically just live off of, hey, send me free samples. Hey, send me free samples. Hey, send me free samples. Hey, my doorbell's ringing every, every month with another box. I've got a whole cabinet in my house. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? It's just become oversaturated, that's all. 
and that's why it's a little bit harder to build in that industry, but it's still an amazing industry. And just so you know, no company and no product is better than the other. They're all amazing. They wouldn't be open if they weren't, so get that out of your mind when someone says my product's the best. Because it's not. <laughs> it's the best for you. Okay, so then why send out cards? Because by this point, I had learned my God-given gift of, of, of infinite patience, the ability to teach people a vision for business, the, the, the ability to articulate it so people at any level can grasp something to understand how the function of business works and wealth works and residual, <coughs> residual leverage works and how to go out and create it. Okay, so I was looking at companies and looking at companies and looking at companies and I was like, man, there's got to be something. And I told you, I get obsessed, you know? And I'm just looking. Well, Scott and Mollett, Scott had been wanting to show me send out cards for four months. It seems that's my thing. Four months. <laughs> and I kept saying, Scott, it's card. I, you know, I don't send cards. I don't send cards, man. I did that in my salon days. I'm over it. I don't want to go back to that route. And, and who can make money on a card? I don't send cards, Scott. I don't send cards. And you know, who can make any money off that? And I just didn't get it. So he tricked me. So here's a little tip for you guys. He had me over for a barbecue, so have your friends over for a barbecue. And he said, sit down, we're gonna send a card. And so I'm like, all right, I'll send a card. He's like, what kind of pictures? And he set me up, he set it up perfectly. What kind of pictures do you have on your phone of Bella, my daughter? He's like, send it to your mom. <laughs> well, my mom is 80 years old. She doesn't have a cell phone, she doesn't have Facebook, she doesn't have any social media, and she doesn't live near me. How horrible of a child am I that I never send pictures because I don't have any. It didn't even dawn on me. Send this card, I completely forget about it, fill it with pictures, off it goes. Completely forget about it. A few days later, my mom calls me and she's crying and I think someone's died. <laughs> they got your card! <laughs> my what, mom, my what, this card! And she's blowing her nose and it just went bam! I'm a horrible daughter and now I can change everything. Do you get it? I got on the phone to the grandkids. I'm like, you guys, you've got to send grandma a card because they'd all married and grown and gone away to college and all this stuff. And it has changed my mother's life, these cards. She takes them to church and shows them to all of her friends. She's got them set up all over the house. I have almost gotten her kicked out of church so many times because now I send her dirty cards. <laughs> I send her dirty jokes. You know, Madge, the old ladies, and the lady smoking her cigarette, and you know, they, they think they're saying one thing and they're not. And, and, oh, it's so funny. I have so much fun with her because I know she's going to take them to church. And my mother is the biggest MLM skeptic forever as she's watched me stand in front of stages and speak to 10,000 people and get all these awards and go on all these vacations and I've earned over seven free cars, luxury cars, all this stuff in this industry. She always wants to know nothing but says, I just hope what you're doing is legal. That's all she was ever saying. All she was she, and I couldn't bring up network marketing at any holiday function or nothing. It was just the most stressful time. She's my biggest customer sender today and she's not my customer. Do you get it? Because she shows my cards to people and they can't believe it and they want to know how I do. Oh, I'll have Darla call you. I'll have her say, honey, can you send so-and-so a card? <laughs> I don't know how she does it, but she does it from her phone. She's pretty amazing. And you think. And so then when that hit me, I went, oh my gosh, I built my salons on cards. We used to send trays to the post office of thank you for visiting. We appreciate your business. Haven't seen you in a while. And thank you for your referral. We built our salons on those and it hit me. I have the tool that can build any business on the planet. And by this time, I'm in love with network marketing. And so I have friends in every company. And I was like, if I join this company, these people are gonna hate me. If I join this company, these people aren't gonna talk to me anymore. Well, if I join send out cards, they're all gonna love me. And I can help every single one of them. And that's exactly what I did. And so that's why I'm with Send Out Cards, you guys. I absolutely love it. Can you tell? <laughs> so I, I, I encourage all of you guys to dig in. Dig in and do it every day. And know that every time you send a card out and every time you do a demo, you're just talking to someone like me. Do you get it? It yeah. may take them four months. It may take their mother getting the card for them to realize it. But you just have to believe. And you go about it with that posture. Don't get frustrated or mad with anybody. Just do it. Every single day. I do it on the toilet. I do it on the plane. I do it in bed. I've created daily habits. Before I get out of bed, I send a card. 
While I'm on the toilet, I send a card. I even have a back of my card that says, yes, I sent you this card while I'm sitting on the toilet. I do. I do. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I try and find an opportunity to catch somebody in action, and I do not send a card with any expectation of a return at all, zero, none. If you have to wonder what to put on your card, you're sending it for the wrong reason. If you have to wonder what back to goes on the back of your card, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Ask yourself, what would I put on the back of my mother or my grandmother's card? That's the card you send. Take your logos off your cards. Take your business things off your card. Give simply to give and you will receive in an abundance that you can't yet even put into words. If you give with the expectation to receive, you're going to be one of those people that says, I send cards all the time and nobody ever calls to thank me for my card. And that's what will happen. Because it, you, you, they, think about if you got a card from me that said happy birthday and then it had my branding on the back and it said, I want you to send a card, let me show you how, blah, blah, blah. No, it, she's only sending me this card so that I'll send cards to someone else. Take that all off, everything changes. All right, you guys, now it's my honor to introduce to you, okay, so listen, I didn't know Jordan Adler, never heard of the guy. You'd think if I was in this industry and in love with it, the guy that lives in my backyard, he's in San Diego all the time, that I don't even know who he is, right? Never heard of the guy. Never heard of the book Beach Money. If you've never read the book Beach Money, it'll change your life, but it'll change your life last. It changes your belief, it changes your knowledge, it changes your awareness, it changes your posture, it change your, changes your life. That's what it takes for it to change your life. Okay, so if you haven't read it, invest in yourself. Do you know that most people that make a paycheck spend it all on bills and food and entertainment and not one penny do they reinvest into something that can grow themselves other than themselves? They don't, <laughs> they don't. Where all people of wealth make it a habit to invest a percentage of their entire income into themselves and they will seek opportunities to make that happen because they know how dangerous it is if you don't. Do you know that most people who struggle paycheck to paycheck make it off one stream of income? That's because they only do one thing because they only know how to trade their time for money and they're out of time. They can't trade any more time for money. People of wealth make it through multiple streams of incomes. Jordan's got, have you ever counted how many streams of income you have? Dozens and dozens. One main stream of income, and that's network marketing, is that I invest my Investments, money. yes. I invest my money that I make here in other things. Yeah. Creates more money. Yep, and so he's got coming into his bank account dozens and dozens, because he owns a bunch of homes that are rental properties, get it? And so he's got investments that return back into his bank account. That's multiple streams of income. All right, anyway, so it's always my honor and privilege to introduce the guy because this guy has taken me to a new level because of his backstory, you guys. Get that book, read that book, put the audio player in your car, turn off your radio, turn off your TV, unplug the darn thing for just 30 days and watch what will happen to your life when you just study people like him. It'll change everything about what it is that you believe in, which is really what creates the what you care about, what people think about you. Do you think I care about what anybody thinks about me? No, I don't care what anybody thinks about me because I believe in what I know, right? So get educated, go from the way I was to the way I am now by immersing yourself into being the student in rooms like these and daily activities. So give it up, here we go, come on Jordan. Hey.